I could write it on the other side of the board too. Say again. I was just going off of what she said about the um, mental suffering after the aftermath. Because some people are sociopaths and they really have no remorse whatsoever. It's kind of hard to. That's an interesting comment. I don't know that they don't suffer, they don't feel other people's pain. But I don't know that they don't. Until you understand what isolation is, real quick. If I was to somehow be able to impose no cell phones for a week. Hang on though, I, I, I'm seeing gasping going on around the room. No cell phones. No cars. <laughs> well, here, let me, okay, I, I, let, let, me, let me give up some of my ammo and, and maybe I'll bring it up next time or not. But this is, and, and you probably know the dimensions of this better. But normally, 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 normally your crib is about six feet wide. And, uh, yeah, I was going to say about nine feet long. So this is your crib and you get a bed that doesn't fold up, at least in Germany, your, your rack folds up, and you get a stainless steel sink, and you get a stainless steel toilet without a seat, which is sometimes an issue. Oh, that's right, and there's a window up here because they want you to get some sunshine and fresh air, but they don't want you looking out. And you get maybe two baths a week, and you get an hour or half hour out in the yard by yourself, and the rest of your time is alone. And you get to spend all that time alone. And we have nothing to compare it to. If I took your phones away for a week, you'd freak out. Take your phones and cars away for a week, you'd freak out. Take any communication with anyone. They're now doing psychological testing and beginning to, they're beginning to wonder because you can spend up to 20 years in isolation if that's not cruel and unusual punishment too. Well, we can have a discussion about that too. So I just want to make clear where you're at when you're going through all of this alone time waiting to be killed, especially if you know you're guilty. You're not going to get out. You're just going to die. So just so, we, just so we have that part of it so we understand a little bit more about what suffering is really. We don't understand that kind of suffering. When we get to terrorism and torture, we'll, we'll talk about other kinds of suffering too. But just so we kind of have that one on the table. Hang on. Did, did, did that finish with you? Yeah. Okay. Rachel. Uh. Oh, it takes too long. Yeah, it's like that's what it goes to cost. It's really just back to the Kill him! <laughs> no, I Googled it. It says that Florida has only executed 96 people. And as of February. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Time, time, time out, time out. Did you say you Googled it? Yes. yes. Are you using your cell phone in my class? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I think that's rule seven. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for it. Yeah, they're waiting for it. Ever. It could take forever. Go ahead. Couldn't they just save money by not feeding them, starving them to death? That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but they're gonna die. So who cares if it's cool? They're not gonna be alive to tell anyone that they did that. It's like not. Two weeks to do that. All of them are going to die because at least 163 should have never been there in the first place. We screwed up and we're making them suffer and then we're making them die for something they didn't do wrong. That's what's at stake. How do you deal with the innocence that we already know we've convicted, thinking we've done it all right? We follow litigation. Litigation has rules. Rules in the, rules in the classroom. We follow litigation and we still get it wrong. And this is where we execute people. So you can make a reasonable case for killing people who are really killers. I can defend that all day long. But what do you do with the innocents? Now I had someone in class last semester say, well, that's just collateral damage. 
Well, think about it. I was walking across the street one day. Some guy gave me a check in the mail. I was about to go to the Justice Department. I didn't have to go. I took my second step out and a 6,000 pound van ran me over traveling 20 miles an hour. That's called collateral damage. I didn't do anything wrong. You know how often collateral damage occurs in life? When we haven't done something wrong and something happens to us? This is the most, when I use the word egregious, that's, that's the worst case scenario. Finding people guilty of murder and sentencing them to death is the most egregious injustice we can perform. That's why it takes so long. Because we know we've made mistakes now and we have no idea how to correct them other than to look backwards. And look, the court is not interested in finding out what it did wrong. Because if it did wrong in death penalty cases, how many other cases did it get wrong? There are people let out of jail on a regular basis who haven't done anything wrong. The evidence pointed at them, they found them guilty, and later on we find out someone else did it. You can't undo crime, or I mean adjudication, justice, you can't undo those things. I'll get to you one more minute. Go ahead. Say that I noticed that um, the against death penalty and the death penalty itself is just um, none of them are based on like on the against. Nobody says uh, maybe they don't deserve. Nobody deserves to die or anything like saying that they don't deserve to suffer. Both of them are. Some people make an argument about the family that hasn't done anything wrong, and now they're going to lose a loved one, too. I think that's the weakest argument, but it is an argument. And, and we'll get to this on Wednesday, or I'll reiterate it, but the death penalty gives nobody closure. It gives people justice. That time around next year, you don't feel any better about the loss, and the year after, and the year after, and the year after. But it can bring justice, and that's what justice is about. It's not meant to bring closure. We think about that. But if you go through it, you realize there's nothing about closure that exists when you lose someone you love, and they're just taken from you. It's not like you get into a gunfight at the OK Corral, and I just happen to be a bad shooter. These are people who didn't do anything wrong, for the most part. So revolves around the fact that our justice system is extremely flawed. And my example is always going to come from Aaron, or from Manson, how long he was in protective custody and on death row and garnered an enormous cult following around him and his family. And I'm sorry, if you have somebody in that status, in that punishment, how or why do they have that level of access for it? I mean, there was a discussion about a crime boss of a mafia family recently. And, and one of the, was it polygamists? They just did a, a documentary on a polygamist that has been in prison, in custody, and was still controlling his. Of course. So, I mean. Of course. And my argument's always going to come. If, if, I, if I got intoxicated, drove out onto Rick Road here, got pulled over, and I have $10,000 to hire an attorney, I could go from a DUI to a drug. We'll bring that up too, absolutely. Those with the money usually pay. Bernie made off with all your money, $84 billion, went to a three-story penthouse, not a three-bedroom, three stories, separate stories, had them connected with elevators. He went home and complained because he had to wear an ankle bracelet. It was violating his sense of privacy. $84 billion, which proves you don't need to shoot someone with a gun to kill them. Some people just jump off a building because of what you did to them. Okay, so there's, there's lots of other things we can deal with, and we will deal with them on Wednesday. I just wanted to kind of set the table a little bit for it. We'll talk about the cost. We're going to go back over and over again to the innocence. This whole thing is built around what do you do with the innocence. There's a ball player. I don't know if he's still here. Uh, now, of course, I'm not going to remember his name. Anyway, he was the one who popped up that day. He said collateral damage. It is a reasonable argument I have never, frankly, thought about. There's collateral damage all the time. Your power goes out. Professor, I couldn't finish my test. The power went out. You haven't done anything wrong and you failed. Shouldn't I give you an exemption for that? Makes sense to me, collateral damage. Why are you looking at me like that now? It is a reasonable argument. I'd never thought about it before, but it's a reasonable argument. 
the problem with the reasonableness of all your arguments is what do you do with the innocent? And it probably comes back to this, that this is a picture of human nature. If we were really good at it, we'd have a system that wouldn't fail. The only reason a system fails is because people make the system. And if we know we can't make a perfect system, how much do we want to squeeze out of a turnip? But we do on justice. I got news for you. For terrorists, for serial killers, premeditated killers. Did you ever see the movie uh, The Count of Monte Cristo? Yes. A fellow gets charged with a crime he didn't commit. They send him to Devil's Island. He gets to spend the rest of his life there. There's a lot of islands out in the Pacific that are uninhabited. I mean, you know. Well, I know, I know. Well, but the Aborigines were there. They were inhabited. But there's a lot of them don't have anybody. We could work out some kind of agreement with the Pacific Ocean, you know. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate your input. We'll go into more detail on Wednesday. If you came in late, let me know you're here, please.